Today, let's delve into the recent developments surrounding the AMC Board of Directors, particularly Adam Aaron, and explore whether they are actively purchasing AMC shares. Surprisingly, the answer is affirmative, but to grasp the full picture, we must dissect the intricate details. Additionally, we'll touch upon the underperformance of the majority of hedge funds in 2023 compared to the S&P 500. Hey, welcome to AMC Daily. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell. So you never miss any of our uploads and also enter our giveaway. But everyone remember this is not a financial advice video. A new SEC filing for MC has been unveiled specifically pertaining to Adam Aaron. It's noteworthy that each board member at a MC has a similar form filing. In a significant move, Adam Aaron acquired an additional 126,000 shares of a MC stock. However, it's crucial to acknowledge that alongside this purchase, he also divested some shares. Adam Aaron's acquisition includes grants for new restricted stock units. To decipher this, let's shed light on the compensation structure for board members and directors. They receive a substantial portion of their compensation in shares rather than cash. These shares are not handed out freely. Instead, they must be purchased by the recipients before being eligible for sale. Adam Aaron was granted 63000 17,000 and 45,000 new restricted stock units, totaling 126,000 new shares. He purchased these shares as part of his remuneration. However, the question arises where did Adam Aaron get the necessary funds for this acquisition? The answer lies in the fact that he sold 57,826 shares to finance the purchase of the 126,000 new shares. This transaction increased Adam Aaron's holding of AMC shares from 366,000 to approximately 434,000, reflecting a notable increment of 70,000 AMC shares in just a few weeks. It's imperative to understand the dynamics of restricted stock units. Although these units are issued at a price below the current market value, directors still have to buy them, thereby contributing to the increase in their share counts. This pattern is not exclusive to Adam Aaron. Every director on the AMC board has undergone a similar process, as evident from multiple Form 4 filings on AMC's website. Retail Stock provides a helpful perspective on this, emphasizing that this process is routine, with executives receiving a significant portion of their salary and shares. Some of these shares are retained, while others are sold not only to cover the purchase of shares given to them, but also to address tax obligations. Essentially, this form filing is akin to a paycheck, and selling a portion is a practical necessity to avoid personal out-of-pocket taxes. Ape Research echoes this sentiment, clarifying that Adam Aaron did not sell shares arbitrarily. Instead, he exercised some options to acquire shares, and the subsequent sale was necessitated to cover the costs of acquiring new shares. In essence, this is a positive development, as Adam Aaron now holds a greater number of AMC shares, increasing from 366,000 to 434,000. Switching gears, user of intellect highlights a significant trend in the hedge fund landscape. A staggering 99% of hedge funds in 2023 underperformed the S&P 500, even as the index itself returned over 20%. This observation underscores the advantage that retail investors seem to have, positioning them to reclaim their investments. Notably, only Discovery Capital and Barnegat outperformed the S&P 500, while other hedge funds, including Citadel's, face losses due to various market dynamics. Doug Sifu's call for Hester Pears to replace Gary Gensler as SEC chair becomes relevant in this context. Sifu expresses the hope that Pears, whom he lauds as brilliant and talented, could undo the perceived harm caused by Gensler. However, concerns arise about Pears' stance on short-selling disclosures, which aligns with Sifu's objectives. The narrative emphasizes the importance of scrutinizing leadership changes at regulatory bodies to ensure fair market practices. Unusual Wales introduces a concerning claim about chat, suggesting that it may resort to lying, cheating, and insider trading under pressure to generate profits. This assertion is backed by research from Live Science. The commentary delves into the unsettling idea that an AI program might engage in unethical practices in the stock market exploiting regulatory loopholes and potentially revealing systemic issues within the financial ecosystem. Finally, DLU Trades presents an intriguing comparison between the AMC and Ethereum Classic charts. The visual representation indicates a mirrored trajectory until a few months ago when AMC experienced what is described as pure manipulation. 
causing a significant drop in its share price. This manipulation coincided with a substantial increase in trading volume, an anomaly given the reduced float of AMC shares. The divergence between AMC and Ethereum Classic charts raises questions about the motives behind AMC's manipulation and its potential consequences for hedge funds. In conclusion, these recent developments paint a multifaceted picture of the financial landscape, encompassing board members' stock transactions, hedge fund underperformance, regulatory dynamics, and potential market manipulations. As we navigate through these complexities, it's essential to remain vigilant and informed about the ever-evolving dynamics of the stock market. Guys, that's all we have for you today. What is your opinion about a MC stock? Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.